Hey boaters, Keith McGowan here. I am the Outboard Dad here to help you have a better boating experience. Soon to be on Amazon, my used outboard motor buying guide. Make sure you pick up a copy. It's $20. Send me an email at keith at outboarddad.com and I will give you a $250 value in a half an hour session over the phone to help you with a motor you're working on or maybe a motor you're looking to buy or a boat you're looking to buy. Today we're continuing on with our Evan Rude f -f 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 thicked engine that everybody loves. So one thing we found out as we just went to get back into this motor because we want to pull this head off and see what it looks like inside and I went to take a look at the hose routing that's here right we have a lot of cooling system that goes through this and as soon as I went to pull this hose off boom look at that plug solid snapped right off full of salt deposits maintenance is key this motor may have failed because it overheated because of that. So why wouldn't you take the time to flush it properly? I have another video out there talking about these Ficked motors and the history of them and what happened to them. And I have guys that say never buy anything direct injected. And I have guys that say, yeah, I've owned one for 20 years, runs great, got 1500 hours on it, but I flush the system, I pull these hoses off Every month or every two months, I know how long it takes before it gets clogged, so I make sure I maintain those things. Should you have to do it on every motor? It's your choice, but when you know it's an issue and you can do something to prevent further damage, why not take the time to do it? So let's get into this and get this head off. Kind of surprised they came out that easy so low in the block. Pop it bell. A little cone here. A little spring action. Now we're trying to get this off the bottom of the head here. Oh, there's another hose on the other side. I have to take that clamp off. Okay, so these are the clamps that are on there. So I just broke them to get them off. This is some kind of valve. We're gonna open it up, see what's inside there, but this is the part that's broken off and as you see, plug solid. So we weren't getting any flow through here. And where does this go? It was out and around to the other side of the block and out. So we weren't getting flow through this mechanism through the poppet valve, right? Because this goes to the poppet valve. So when the poppet valve opened, it was stopping right here. Yes, it was going out this hose, which goes over to our, our other head. So it was going through to the other head, but it wasn't coming through from this side. So let's open this up. Pretty crusty, got those two bolts out. Let's see what it looks like inside. Guess what, there's another thermostat in there. Stuck partially open and then stuck in place, but obviously nothing's getting through that. So that's not working too good. Let's go a little deeper, see if we can get this head off. Snapped one head bolt already. Of course, it's one all the way at the bottom where the most corrosion usually ends up. Disconnect all these oil lines, it looks like all these oil lines go to each injector. So before we pull the head off, we're gonna to have to disconnect those oil lines. I'm not sure if I'm just gonna cut them or try to save them. Snapped another one. We did get the bolts out for the coil packs. So we'll go ahead and see if we can get that out of there. Now these coil packs look very similar to the old school carbureted motors. Maybe they just reuse. Ground on here as well to get that ground off of there. So we got a couple head bolts here. So it's a nice big bracket that these coil packs are on. I've seen these coil packs on a two cylinder motor on a four cylinder, six cylinder motor, each individual one. Uh, might see if there's any part numbers on it, see if they match up other motors. 
snapped right off, so it may make it a little difficult to get this head off. Let's get into these oil lines next. So these lines are definitely too brittle for me to try and remove them. So I'm just cutting all of them. Two to each solenoid, two to each injector, one fuel, one oil. Let me get a bucket here to catch this crap. Nothing like the smell of nasty old fuel to stink up your shop. Let's get the rest of these head bolts out. Now I'm going to try and pry on this a little bit because we have two broken bolts in there. And of course, just the heads broke off. It didn't break off down inside. Maybe easier to get it out if the block is reusable, if anybody would want it. Now, I don't know if this block could be used for a carbureted motor or not. It may be redesigned and redrilled and only be used for our famous f -f 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 fix. So I'm going to put a socket in here, see if I can get some leverage. So we'll get our famous jack of all sprays, spray up those broken bolts a little bit. I'm also going to spray inside some of the holes to get some lubricant down in between the gasket. I'm not even sure if there's a gasket. I think this might be an O-ring head. So we'll spray it up. We'll let it sit for a little while. And we'll keep prying at it, see if we can get it off. All right, wow, that was a lot. So we had to strip this down because we broke those two bolts when we were taking this head off. This head came right off, no problem. Looked them in a flashlight. There's some scoring in there, but it doesn't look like anything out of the ordinary. Interestingly enough, same thing on this one. The top cylinder that had that 80 PSI, I'm going to take a wild guess and say the piston rings are kind of stuck against the piston, and that's why we're not getting it, because it really doesn't look like any more than normal wear. We were able to take the two studs out. They came out without too much effort, which was pretty cool. We did have to get a little wedge in here to get this out, but didn't damage anything too severely that it couldn't be put back together if someone so choose to. So let's take a look at what came off of this motor. It's really involved. Let's take a look. So these are the reed plates. I have heard that they come loose. Everything was nice and tight on here. Although there was some seriously thick oil in the bottom of this. So again, that's probably from this motor sitting for too long and that oil just thickened up and thickened up. So even if someone tried to run this motor, you would have to flush all the oil lines, all the fuel lines, everything. The nasty fuel that was in there was really stinking really bad. Let's see what else we took off of this motor. So we were able to take the entire EMM, the capacitor that comes with it, all the relay that's here, and all the wiring harness all in one shot. So there is a ton of wires and everything that gets connected to these motors. If I was reassembling this, I would have labeled one, one, unplug, two, two, unplug. I would have went through it, taken a lot more pictures. I didn't do a video of it because it would just would have bored you guys just watching all this come apart because that's all it was, was just taking it apart. So we have this, if someone's looking for this, it is a water-cooled model. And very interestingly enough, when I look inside where the water tubes go, it looks pretty clean. So I have a feeling when it sat, all the water ran down to the bottom to those tubes and corroded everything out in the bottom. And this obviously worked because the motor ran. So if someone's interested in a wiring harness and the EMM model or something like that, let me know, we'll see if we can hook you up. So we have a fuel filter here. I did not remove it. I didn't try to drain it. I'm keeping it upright because it smells nasty. Oil pump on here, right? So we want to make sure that's good. And we have another pump here, which looks like it was replaced because it's got a nice new label on it. So if anybody's interested in this, let me know. And I'll probably list this as parts for sale, put it on my shelf, just leave it there for when someone needs it. So the heads, right, came off, not too bad. Injectors all in one place. So this head came out, no problem. Wait a minute, no. This one we had to crack because that one stud would not come out. So this head is no good, but all the injectors were functioning because the motor ran. And also when we went to fire it up or turn it over to do our compression check, we could see each one of them click, 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 and pss, 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 spitting that nasty fuel out of it. So we know that these injectors do function. Of course, they would need to be cleaned and flushed properly in order to be to be operating and we have the other three on the other head which didn't get cracked so if someone was to rebuild this obviously they would have to replace this head because of that that got cracked out there because of that one bolt that was stuck it's very possible that had someone taken the time to do the work that was needed to be done to winterize this properly 
before it sat for so many years. I'm gonna take a wild guess and say close to 10 years this motor sat. I was also able to get all of the bolts out that hold the engine block to the midsection. Well, I'm saying all of them, I didn't take the small 3 8 ones out, but they're usually not a problem to get out. So we'll probably tilt this motor up, take the lower unit off, and then we'll go ahead and take this block off. I don't know that I'm gonna waste the time disassembling the whole block. I'm not gonna pull all the pistons out and everything. Someone's looking for a block, or I may take it apart and just use it for scrap metal. So pretty much that's all we're gonna do with this. Uh, I will go through and knock the pins out and take the power tilt and trim out. If you're interested on how to do that, you can watch my uh, repair I did on tilt and trim seal for 150 horse Johnson or Evinrude, I'm, I'm not sure. It was a while ago, but I drove those pins out. There's, there's uh, clips on there. You drive the pins out, pulled it out, made my own tool here. And you can look at that power tilt and trim removal for the caps. And I put new O-rings in. It's the same setup as that's on this. So you can look up that video if you're looking for that. So please like, subscribe, send me any comments that you have. And we're going to go deeper talking about these fixed motors, talking about these four-stroke motors. Not sure, maybe we'll get into that one next. Hmm, I have to figure out. I have three, four motors projects I have to do. I have to decide which one I wanna do. Maybe you guys can tell me which one you want me to get into next, but I'm kind of dying to get into that four stroke. I do have to complete putting the cowlings on and getting the mercury done and completely put back together so it's ready for sale. So I'll probably do that first and then figure out what I'm gonna do with that four stroke next. So I'm gonna disassemble this the rest of the way and just put it as storage in my parts and we'll move on from there. My used outboard motor buying guide soon to be on Amazon. It's a it's for 20 it'll be for $20. If you send me an email with proof proof of purchase at keepitoutboarddad.com, I will offer you a free half hour session at $250 value over the phone to help you with a motor you're working on or with more importantly one you're looking to buy. So this is my used outboard motor buying guide. So that's what I really want to do is help you with a motor doing the proper tests. Sometimes you have difficulties doing them. I can help you overcome them so you can thoroughly know what you're buying when you're buying a used outboard motor. So we'll talk some more. Thanks for joining me today and have a great day.